is L M I G. Well, I live in uh, between Ghana and Nigeria. You know, I used to teach at the University of Nigeria, but uh, I'm retired, and so I have the freedom of living in two places. In fact, three places if I want. And <laughs> well, I uh, to why I donated work and uh, why I want the legacy is well, I'm old. <laughs> I'm nearing my <laughs> end of <laughs> end of life, and at this time, one thinks about what one leaves behind. How have you helped society? Because uh, you have lived in society all along, and society certainly has been one of the greatest uh, helps to you. You know, imagine a world in which you were just alone and uh, you know there's nobody else. The much that we get from society uh, makes me think that at the end of or before one leaves society one has to leave something that helps the society to grow and I thought about uh, printmaking because uh, of all the genres of art that have practiced so far, uh, the one that I see a lot of collaboration is in printmaking. Uh, I've tried printmaking in several uh, printmaking shops and, uh, and including br brandy wine and I see the kind of atmosphere that is generated here and I think that it will be very useful for young artists who normally would be working alone in their studios, something like this would be useful. And also the fact that if one travels out of one's usual uh, domicile and goes out meeting other people, it's a very great form of education. And the fact that the United States and then brandy wine in Philadelphia with museums and uh, other art institutions around uh, would give a lot of exposure to people from Africa who would come here to uh, do their residency. You know, because printmaking has so many possibilities, as I can see, you know, that uh, artists working in all genres or other genres have to uh, try their hands out and uh, I'm sure that they would get con uh, converted into print bakers. And print making is one of the very democratic ways of making sure that people own your work. You know, because you're doing multiples, you know, it's easier for people to collect them and, uh, yeah.
My name is Alan Edmonds. I'm the founder director of Brandywine Workshop and Archives, which is celebrating its 50th anniversary. When we started, we had a group of really dedicated individuals who were secure their own position within their profession, whether they were teachers, professors, or they were studio artists being able to support themselves through the work that they created in the studio. There had to be a certain level of confidence. you got to have the active leadership of somebody that's there on a day-to-day -day basis, directing, planning, strategizing, but you need the supportive leadership of a board of directors who believe in the mission, are willing to commit time, talent, and resources to help progress and advance the idea of the institution, whatever that may be. It's been most beneficial for Brandywine to have early on started out receiving support and engaging with well-established artists who felt that they could see in Brandywine a vehicle to address some of their concerns, such as shrinking this gap between institutional support and real support for artists who may be considered disadvantaged because of their location, uh, their social financial situation, age, or by ethnicity, which has always been a tremendous barrier for artists of any age. The biggest change for me in the last 50 years is that people have begun to identify culture, a, a global circumstance, for want of a better word. And I've seen a greater recognition of the fact that there's no such thing as Western art without Eastern art. There's no such thing as American art without Western art. And because of immigration, we've seen Latin America, the, the axis has moved more from east to west or west to east and more north to south as the influence of the Caribbean and Latin American countries has become stronger within its influence in American culture. We're in a global cultural situation and I think groups can prosper if they address that, realizing that the audiences and the support will come from a diversified community. The COVID-19 pandemic was a disaster for most nonprofits and of course the cultural community. However, for Brandywine, because we've always tried to think strategically and beyond our immediate community and resources and everything, we were well prepared. We didn't know what we were preparing for. We thought we were preparing just to progress with technology as things changed in technology and how that impacted the, the creativity and the making of art, how it impacted the management, the collections management, and the experience that, that art and culture was given to its audiences. And, it's, and of course, its reach. Um, but for Brandywine, it meant that we were well positioned to work remote. We had set up a system where artists could have residencies conducted without coming to Philadelphia. You know, because technology allowed us to do videos, webinars, immediately send images, progress images and things. So we were able to function, but you never function as well as when you have that person in person. I would hope that based upon our longevity, we've touched the lives and careers of many artists, art collectors, art educators, and students interested in the field of the fine visual arts. I think it's important that one generation leaves, if not a legacy, leaves something material behind or inspirational that can help advance the next generation. In the field which I chose, there was very little institutional support for particularly artists of color, and I wanted to change that by providing an institution that could support young emerging artists of color, of all nationalities, ethnic groups, and also of all ages. I thought it was very important 
that in order to fight the challenge of equity and diversity that we look at today, that you do it not in an individual, solely individual basis, but you do it on a collective, and you do it by institutional basis where real change can happen. What do I think about when I think about retirement? Okay. I look forward to being able to concentrate on my, more on my family, to be honest with you. Uh, to concentrate when I think about art in my career to do more of my own work. And when I think about Brandywine, it's doing st big strategic projects. I hope that Brandywine will always have its door open to me because I'm always going to want to visit. And I want to visit and bring good gifts. I'd like to develop an endowment, whether my wife and I, you know, do one separately, but I know that I'm very committed to building an endowment that will help Brandywine be financially sustainable going forward. But I'm confident and enthusiastic about engaging in that effort and then if, if I can be of assistance to Brandywine or any other group in an advisory capacity, I anticipate perhaps joining some other boards. People, many people over my whole career have mentored me and I feel obligated to, to give back and to mentor when I can, when I can. I, you know, I've, I've been blessed with a lot of longevity, a lot of exposure and experience. I've also taught for 25 years and uh, I love giving back. You know, I love sharing because so many people don't have access to people that have any information for them. They can share, pers give perspective, you know. My exposure and experiences in the arts is global. For the continents that I visit, the countries I've visited, the artists that I've gotten to know, it's, it's, it's broad. 50 years is a lot of experience if it grows and evolves. It didn't stay stagnant, you know. And I'm proud of that, and I'm proud of the fact that wherever I saw an opportunity, I tended to take advantage of it. Now we have an international following, international reputation for our brand and our quality. We got 19 satellite collections across the country, from University of Texas to Rhode Island School of Design to Harvard to Philoff Museum of Art, Pennsylvania Academy of Art. This is amazing, you know. To have started something with nothing, with people that had no money, but we had the will and we had the commitment and we gave the time to make something happen. You know, so uh, I'm very grateful to all the board members that have supported me, all the staff that have worked and supported my efforts, uh, because it's always a team. There's no one person. In closing, I would say that if you ask me what the next 50 years of Brandywine might look like, I haven't a clue. I would hope, though, that the past 50 years has built a solid foundation upon which something can be built. And it's built in a way that considers the original mission, today's mission, and what is going to be relevant and needed going forward. But the world is changing so rapidly in every aspect. And just like we had COVID-19, there's going to be another major global event that's going to change things again. When it happens, we don't know. You have to be flexible and resilient. So I would hope that whatever the next 50 years brings, that Brandywine will be at that point resilient enough to continue to be relevant.